Or they may be playing football And the crowd is yelling, kill the referee But no matter what the score when the clock strikes four Everything stops for tea Hi and welcome to Spill the Tea, the show for British expats and everybody that loves all things British. My name's Ian. And my name is Sam. Good morning, everyone. I'm still looking at this camera, but I'm going to go over here and read my list. We've got a weekly update, of course, our BFF with e and Ross King, MBE. We're big time now. <laughs> we are so big time. We are big time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning to everybody out there. Uh, I am... Quite excited about today's show. Are you a giddy game show? I am giddy game show. Do you know what that comes from? No. Do you remember Grey Pape? No. Giddy game show? No. Cartoon? No. Oh, does anyone else remember giddy game show? Grey Pape? Grey Pape. <laughs> so, but regardless, <laughs> our, our guest today, our guest today is, um, is, is indeed Ross King. Yes. MBE. And the reason I'm a little excited, but also a touch nervous is... He actually knows this game. He does oh, this for a living. He, he does the whole TV hosting, interviewing thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys saw the little post I did just last night, which had a few, just a few examples yeah. of, of what Ross has done in terms of his interviewing. It's ridiculously it is, and we, impressive. And we'll have more. And we're going to have more uh, yeah. as part of his intro. And, and there's so much. Yes, I know. You have to play it because I, it's just so impressive. It, I cannot believe the scope of what he's done in the entertainment industry. I it, cannot believe it. And actually, you know, I, I know what I know of Ross from just, you know, being back in the UK and all the TV yeah. shows he's done. Um, but, you know, digging digging a little deeper, I, I was totally fine. I was just like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be and then, and then I was like, oh, my gosh, this, this is insane. <laughs> I know. You know the you know the, the the beer guy, the most interesting man in the world. You know, yes, the, yes, yes, no, yes. No, it's Ross King. It's Ross King. That's it's now right. the most interesting man in the world, and That's we shall right. find out yeah. why that is in uh, in just a, a little while. So he's going to be coming up. Shortly. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. And really we have um, and we got our B BFF today. Our BFF, and she's uh, gone alcoholic again. She, <laughs> well, I don't blame her during this time. I think Do you? I've re I mean, should the BFF should actually be booze, fitness, <laughs> and fashion because <laughs> no booze. Booze for fashion and falling down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, she's... Um, Sounds it, like yeah. a weekend out back home. <laughs> so it's it's a cocktail time from, from Eve. So uh, <laughs> booze, fitness and fashion. Yeah, I love that. And and uh, so how you, how you been... Uh, how's your week? <sighs> the, the weeks just fly by and I'm already tired and it's Tuesday. So it's already been a long week <laughs> and it's Tuesday. All but right. I've... I've, I've Stopped my DIY on the patio way too hard. We just had a heat advisory. Did you know it was 128 degrees in Death Valley yesterday? Hence the, t the, the title, name Death, Death Valley. Valley yes. Have you been? Yes. It's horrible, isn't it, that heat? Well, I actually went in the winter, mainly. Oh, did you? Yeah, and it's it's actually beautiful out there. There's some salt flats. Yeah. Um, which are great for taking photographs because they're yes. all like, it's very cool. And then the... the, the the desert floor is just cracked. The, the crusty A bit like my floor, hands yeah. right now from <laughs> yeah, washing, exactly. washing and antibacterial. All, all our skin is basically like, you know, <laughs> the desert up. floor right now. That's exactly. why I like driving to LA. But with the humidity, you start to look younger as you drive into LA. And then you age on the <laughs> way back to it Vegas. Is? It is. I always say to Jim, oh, look, my skin's plumping up on the way in. That's just worry of coming back. <laughs> well, maybe. As well. Really, is what yeah. that comes down to. You know, um, down in Death Valley, though, um, there are some very, very large, well, the boulders really that move by themselves. Yes, I have heard. This. Do they know Spooky. what the phenomenon is? Um, is it when it rains? No, I don't know. Really, they shift them. They slide. Aliens. Aliens. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I loved it down there. Although we stayed in a, we stayed in a place that was, I would think, very misrepresented. <laughs> right. On on the website. Yeah. Where it had an air conditioning rattling unit that was set at a certain temperature, which was like 55 degrees. And it was oh so God. noisy. We had the dogs with us and it was horrendous. Couldn't I'm, sleep. I was just seeing if there, I had a photograph in my favorites here, which I don't. So I'll have to look it up. It'd be great if we don't, if we'd have known we were going to talk about this. I know. Because I have a great <laughs> photograph that's at, at uh, as you're driving out there, that comes to like a T-junction, you turn. Yes. Whatever, right. And right at the T-junction, there's a sign that says uh, Death Valley Valley um, Medical Health Center. Right. And, and it just, it's, if you want to go to somewhere where you feel like you're going to recover, it's probably not the Death Valley <laughs> Medical Health Center. Wrong name. They should rethink that one. They, they really should. It's a great picture, but 
There's a race down there, isn't there? A cycling challenge at Death and Valley. It blooms beautifully in the summer. Do you know? Oh, in the summer? No, 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 no in the spring. Uh, spring. Do you know? Makes that sense. was the one thing I wanted to do this year was uh, Borrega Desert. I, th I think that's how you pronounce it. But because of the whole, it hit right when Corona started. Yeah, yeah. And we just didn't get a chance to go. But uh, that would, we had more spring flowers here, I think, in the desert this year. What's <laughs> just, wrong with your arm? Not working. To, I moved the, the arm of the chair up, and I didn't realise I just did a. It's not I there. just did a Dell boy. <laughs> Play it cool. Play Which, it cool. incidentally, I had just been that. voted the um, most popular TV moment in British TV history. Really? Is was the moment where Dell boy is there, so like, Play it cool. Play it cool, and then he falls through the bar. But what about? I almost just did that. But what about two soups? Two soups. Uh, oh. It might have been on the list. Two soups. Two soups. <laughs> um, so who we got watching this morning? Yeah, let's We've got have a lot to get through today. Let's have a so gander. Let's, let's have a gander. Go. Suzanne, good morning to you guys. Um, my mum's watching. I thought you called her Suzanne. Suzanne? <laughs> Suzanne. <laughs> well, it is Bastille Day, so it oh, could there. be we're French. Gonna, we're going to make the it all of French. It. Um, my friend Amy is watching. Hello, Amy. Which I just told her to, so you know, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Kevin. Kevin's back. We missed you last week. You weren't watching last week. Uh, we know. We, you see, some audiences you can just assume there's millions of people watching, and in fact, I think that little number in the top left is is multiplied by the million. So we have thirty six right. million watching. Thirty six million right now. But we, when you when we notice you're not on, we're going to let you know. Where oh, were you, yeah, Kevin? We'll come and get you. See, we will come and get you. Heather Craig, she remembers Grey Pape. Oh, all right. Mick's on. Morning, Mick. Mike's on. <gasps> Craig's on. C Craig. Anna Craig. Uh, Catherine. Good morning, Catherine. And um, your mum. All the peoples. Mark, all the peoples. All Mick, the peoples. Uh, it is caused by rain. Oh, here's your Death Valley fact from Mick. Uh, it, it is caused by rain that freezes and moves the rocks. Uh, that is what I have heard anyway. That makes sense because the desert does get very, very cold at night. Still aliens. <laughs> so do you want to, do you feel like a Guinness for breakfast? Uh, a Guinness? It's a, a Guinness. bit early, isn't it? No. Uh, <laughs> <gasps> yes. I've got one for you and one for me. Look at this. We got, oh, pick a camera. Whichever one you want. There you go. And I'll pick that Gin, one. Guinness. <laughs> Guinness flavoured crisps. Get it right. So, oh. I was. I saw them and thought, we've got to try them. We've got to try them. All right. What's this, Travis? ASMR? ASMR. That can't be ASMR. That's not relaxing at all. This might be, though. I don't know. <laughs> Mm. I think I prefer Marmite soda. Ooh, and, oh, no, they're good. You like them? Do you know what? These would make a very good crisp sandwich, which you've never had, correct? No. Right. Why, why would you do something? We're going to have crisp sandwiches. You haven't lived until you've had a crisp sandwich. My granddad used to, granddad used to call it a crisp, crisp sandwich. I'm trying to lean away so I'm not crunching the microphone. However, I did have the Codfather. Oh! Mm. I went. What We, did, what we did went on um, Saturday? Mm hmm. Yeah, Saturday. And saw Glenn and, and, and did the whole thing. Did our t m w the Wi-Fi test to make sure that we'll be able to do a show nice, from there in a couple nice. of weeks. So I figured all that out. Figured all that out. And uh, it was great. These are good. They're intense. They are intense. They are, actually. But, well, you know. We'll be drunk by the end of the show. It will. Give it will. Um, the other thing I noticed this week in the news is uh, the Queen has come out with a new range of gin. It's Buckingham Palace gin. Really? Yeah. There, and I'm, it's it's going to be a, we should try and get some. But yeah. it's, I don't know what it's even called, actually, but it's the Queen's Gin. Have they forayed into the alcohol business before? Or is this their first? As consumers, a lot, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. I'm no, sure she know. loves a tipple. <laughs> I'm sure she does. That's... But what would she, what would the Queen think about it, Travis? <laughs> You like that? Yeah. That was loud. Oh, it was. It nearly deafened me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I made that this week. I like that. For the show. I like that. I figure it's one of... Because sometimes we have moments. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes we have moments that just deserve uh, the stare that the, only a mother yeah. can give you. Yeah. And we don't have our mothers here, so, so it'll have to be the queen It'll have to instead. be the queen to give us the look. Yeah. To behave. Do you want to take that one more, one more look? Yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Good. 
<laughs> it's good. It's really good. So in case of emergencies, that's what we have. Does anyone else's <laughs> video just drop, Mark? D D Jews asked. Um, and we're good from our end, aren't we there, Travis? Yeah. We're good from our end. Kevin's um, here. We know Kevin. We're, I just talked about Kevin for like five minutes. I know. Are you with us? <laughs> <laughs> Not 100%. No, I know. Talking to the Queen, that. they've got a very nice story here. Yes. You know what's so funny? I've got, these are my new glasses. They're bifocals I can normally have, but the prescription has changed. And now I have to mess around with how far away oh, so you have to do the whole... everything is. Yeah, yeah. And so I've had to, I've had to like zoom in on all the text today <laughs> because oh. it's, it's still not, I'm still not quite used to it. I drove here okay, though. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the Queen responds to a seven-year-old boy who made her a happiness crossword. Uh, he sent it with a letter saying how she might be feeling sad or lonely because of lockdown. What All a right. sweet boy. Anyway, uh, the Queen sent an adorable letter back to this boy who created this, this happiness crossword. Um, his, his name is Timothy Madders. And uh, he said it was very good and it was very important and made me happy that she liked it. Uh, while much of the world remains in lockdown amid the coronavirus pandemic, everyone's trying to find hobbies and activities to help keep them busy in lieu of their usual routines, which we'll probably talk about that a little bit. Right. Um, and so he was thinking outside of the box, as seven-year-olds do. They're the best little geniuses <laughs> on the earth. And uh, he's, in, he's, he's from Essex, this little boy, and he uh, decided he would do this and tasked his mother with sending it to an extra special recipient, which, of course, was the Queen. Uh, what else, what else, what else? So he did get this letter back, and uh, he wanted to do something to cheer her up. He, he did... He did it in the neatest handwriting he possibly could. How sweet. And he's very particular about getting the happiness crossword to Her Majesty. He sent it with a letter saying how he, she might be feeling sad and lonely during this time. And he picked happiness as a theme because he wanted words that would make people think of happy things as they did it. And I think that's really oh, lovely. Probably. So the letter he got back, and it came from Windsor Castle, said... said <laughs> That's gross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it said, your thoughtfulness is greatly appreciated and the Queen hopes that you two are keeping safe and well in the current situation. Aww. How very sweet. He'll that remember sweet. that for the rest of his life. He will. That is a wonderful thing. I've called Buckingham Palace before, like you do, and they answer it like this. Hello, Buckingham Palace. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> they honestly do. <laughs> I was wondering it. what you were going to say. I think it was going to be some big grand no. thing. It's like, hello. Buckingham Palace. Oh, yeah. I was excited. Yeah, I'm sure you were. I was excited. I thought I it was very, a, very sweet. Guinness, Guinness to Chris. Hey, you know what was interesting this week was our the the Jaffa Cake Gin, which oh. um, Lee Bennett originally posted, and I I lifted it from him. So thanks, Lee. Um, did he did he actually possess it? Yes. Oh, but that was his photograph. Oh. So everybody seems. I think I think we should order some Jaffa Cake Gin. Sounds amazing. Uh, <laughs> this is going to descend into just. Drink and food. Drink and food, really. The booze and food. <laughs> the booze and food. We'll rebrand. Oh. Um, but now that went well. And also the 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 Dame Vero thing we had on on the page as well, which was which was nice. The it fly was. pass and everything. Yeah. Oh, that was good for her. That was really good. We like amazing. That. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think is it time for if it, we're actually getting to it a little sooner today because ah. we want to save some good time for Ross. So I've got one more thing. Yeah, but before we go to anything else, Sam's got a thing. I've got a thing. It's about tea. Brains of regular tea drinkers are more well organized and efficient, study says. You need to drink more tea. Yeah. <laughs> I've got my tea right here. A hot brew every day could help keep your brain buzzing smoothly. It's one of the most common jokes shared between co workers in the uh, in the office kitchen. I'm just a zombie before I get my cup of coffee, but research um, published this summer finds that this summer, that's probably last oh. year, uh, finds a different warm drink can help your brain function better so you don't have to shuffle around looking like, like, like you're ready to eat other people. Um, they took MRI scans of habitual tea drinkers and non tea drinkers and found that the brains of regular tea drinkers will more well organized and efficient. So uh, the study made a point of targeting the effects of tea itself instead of looking at tea extracts and other constituents of drink of the drink, as a number of other studies have done. And so they said our study provided the first... Do you not have the patience? Relax, you're fidgeting. You've got ants not, in your pants. I'm not fidgeting. You're, I, I keep trying to drink my tea and end up crashing your, your <laughs> um, look, see? 
So, <laughs> well, if you get it close enough, I can have a drink. Well, like, you could. So I'm trying with to, an optical I'm, illusion. I'm trying to be polite and not crash the scene. And Travis <laughs> is trying to do his best. But <laughs> they said, obviously, a study provided the first compelling evidence that tea drinking positive, positively contributes to brain structure, making network organisation more efficient. And the team of researchers were from Singapore, the UK, and China. And it was published in, <laughs> I think we probably both have this journal sent to our house, the Journal of Aging. <laughs> you might. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> it rearranges your neurons. Oh, well, there you go. Good to know. More tea. Drink more tea, my friends. Vicar. If you, now, <laughs> here's the thing. You said last week that, that something about me saying right, right, and it was like I was supposedly sort of, like, <laughs> I've realized I do that a lot now. Oh, really? But it's not meant in any condescending yeah, horrible or, way. Or, no, it's not. It's like, oh, you right, right. You're worried about that. Right, right. From last all week, week. You're saying that. No. All week, no, not really. No. But, <laughs> you say you shouldn't. But what did raise my attention is, you know, we love uh, listening, watching. We can watch. Listening to LBC. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed so many of the callers, there are certain words, when you don't live in the UK anymore, um, there are certain words that, that pop up which just seem very... If you've not heard them in a while. Right, but but they're used all the time. Right. Examples being uh, literally. Yes. The word literally I is think. literally used all literally, literally all the time. All the, all the time. Literal time. Literally. <laughs> um, actually. Actually, yeah. Uh, actually, actually. Actually. Which makes sense. I mean, there was a movie, Love Actually, and yeah. that was obviously, I think, you know, it's, it is a, yeah. we know that that's the thing. Yeah. And the other one is, of course. But like, like you would know. So of course, you know, I, I uh, you know, as an alcoholic, as you know, <laughs> but so, well, you don't know. But of course, but it, it, of course, is used as one of those kind of other. <laughs> I don't know why I went that route with that one. But anyway, point being, it's LBC. They often say things. You like do. That. You 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 forget what words are being used. That, that's why I think right. it makes me laugh. They stand they, it, when we all get together. I'm yeah. like, oh, I haven't heard that in ages. That's right. Yeah. And, and it really stood out. But it was the of course thing. It's like, no, it's not of course. I don't know. What... I mean, and of course. <laughs> But I use that one too, mainly if I'm writing. If hmm. I'm texting, I'll, I'll use, of course. I am the girl of, I am, that's absolutely fabulous. Brill, um, hilarious. Uh huh. And one of my favorite words is tantamount. Tantamount? Yeah. yeah. To, to what? <laughs> to, to anything, really. To anything. What, what favorite English words do you still use that people go, huh? What on earth are you on about? Oh. Oh, well, I only have to say water and people have no idea what I'm saying. Um, so apparently a couple of people did have a few dropouts. Did you? Uh, Mike in Greece had a, uh, had a dropout there. Um, uh, Mark did. And, uh, and Craig, had, uh, no, Heather. Heather had a little issue there. So we, we're, we're good, right? Yeah, we're we got good. All, the, all the green lights? Yep. All right. Must be you guys. Oh, Fix your internet. Fix it. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for that, internet. Travis. <laughs> That's today's public information film <laughs> on behalf of the internet party. <laughs> that made me laugh. Yeah. Oh my gosh! What, so, so what other words do you use aside from the ones you mentioned? As I, 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 I'm very. I try to use as few words do as you know possible. The, the one word I do not like. Well, there's a mm, there's a couple. I don't Can even, we say them? I don't even want to say them. Are the Internet Broadcast Standards yeah, Authority going like, to shut us down? They're just like ugh, cringe. First of all, I don't like awesome. At all. That's awesome. I never, I never liked it. Unfortunately, I have you been known to use that one on occasion. I just feel like it should be reserved for something that really is. I can't at all. Yeah, I no, no, like I, I, I get you. I don't like the word, and I think a lot of people will relate to this, moist. Well, I, that's like universally now the word <laughs> that nobody wants to hear. It's just a thing. Mick Burns, gobsmacked on your bike. Gobs is that a good or a bad? Is that one we like? I like gobsmacked. I don't use it much, yeah. but I like, I like it when I hear it. Another word I don't like is, oh, I can't even say it. It's, it grosses me out. It's not an English word. I'm going to have to <laughs> spell, going I'm gonna have to spell it because I can't say it. It makes me cringe. P-A-N-T-I-E-S. Are you going to say it, Travis? Can you spell it? Did you... P-A-N-T-I-E-S. Panties? Oh, I can't <laughs> spell it. It's gross. I heard it last night. Undergarments, you'd rather say? It, it's a Bloomers. Little, it's a little pervy. Yeah, there's nothing. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's what it is. I don't like it. How's how's this show descended into I this already? I don't know. My twin sister We already know that the chat with Ross is going to be, is is it could go there. We already it, know that. Yeah, we already had a chat this morning. We did. <laughs> My sister does not like the word cake. 
Oh, that's a terrible word. She likes like. cake, but she doesn't like the word cake. What what words don't you like? I um, well, no, opposite. I'm I'm rather partial to the word pamphlet, just because <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason to it. I love it. Yeah, I, I do love it. Because the it's, a, flirt, it's it, a pamphlet. Yeah, it's like a small pamph. Hello. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to read it at the same <laughs> I time. I thought that was pretty funny. Say it again. <laughs> Let's do a replay. A, pa- a pamphlet. It's like a small pamph. It's because a pamphlet. You can be grunt- oh, a tiny you can thing. Be disgruntled. Oh, good Lord. You can be disgruntled, but you can't be gruntled. Yeah, that's true. You can be disheveled, but you can't be shoveled. <laughs> There's all the words. I'm looking so shoveled today. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Yeah, you you're, you're <laughs> entirely shoveled. I, I have love to say. that. I am shoveled today. You're shoveled up. Oh, yeah, we've got one here. Let's see if I can... <laughs> Hang on. Those Hang bifocals on. are working. <laughs> They're working great. I've got to figure out where to go. I love the phrase, I, I didn't, as, as, as in I did. did. What? Uh, I love the phrase, I didn't, as in I did. Didn't I? I didn't, yes. Or tit shop. <laughs> yes. Tit shop. Of tit shop. Yeah. Pamph. A little pamph. A pamphlet. Little, yeah. I did do. I use did do. I did do. You're on your own on that one. Had you went as well, <laughs> Mick? <laughs> oh, it was Mick? Oh, that makes sense then. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to move on. Oh, wonky. Wonky's a good wonky. one. Wonky's a good one. Wonky's a really um, good one. We're going to move on. We're now going to uh, dive straight into our checker day. Travis. <laughs> it's checker day. It's a day where we check things on the internet. It's check a day. <laughs> it's things we check on the internet. Uh, yeah. Maybe we should stop that. You need, you need to clip on two and four if you're making it jazz. Yeah, not one and three. <laughs> that, I'm that, not a music major. I'm that sorry. boy does not have rhythm. Trust me. I've seen him dance. I like it, though, because every week it's a unique song. Uh-huh. And I love that. It sounded like last week's, just longer and more painful. Yeah. We're going to have to see what you did last week and compare. All right. What have it's, you got? It's checkaday.com. The day where we check days. First out of the blocks, it's National Grand Marnier Day. Oh, that is nice. You'll get those in those little Christmas liqueur. <laughs> Forget the Christmas liqueurs. <laughs> I came prepared. <laughs> this is about the most prepared show I've had ever. It might be. Now, the reason I brought it is, well, because I like Grand Marnier. <laughs> but does it taste good in tea? Oh, gosh. I've got mint tea. Well, it's not going to taste good in yours, but but let's see. Boom. Just a little splash. Well, uh, this show's going to just turn into a science it's project, gonna, isn't it? You know, with the, the did anyone try the Marmite soda? Did you make it at home like we did? No, I think everybody saw our reaction and was like, no, I'm good. Do we need to zoom in? I don't think what? the Queen's going to like well, uh, this. this the... <laughs> <laughs> She's not going to like this at all. <laughs> no, it doesn't taste good. It's not working. Can I have a smell at that? You can. You can. Um, so it's National Grand Marnier Day, so that's... That's, that's all kinds of wrong. It's National Mac and Cheese Day. Oh. Wait for it. <laughs> no, no, I don't have mac and cheese in me. It's like a You're three right. course, five course <laughs> meal today, soup to nuts. It's National Tape Measure Day. <laughs> right. Don't ask me why. Uh, it's I pa- have one in my bag. It's pandemonium. I always have a tape measure in my bag. You do? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, good to know. In case nobody, <laughs> people just don't measure up. Measure in case up, they don't measure up. <laughs> um, it's Pandemonium Day. We should change the name of the show to that. Actually, I think that's pretty apt for the show so far. Mm-hmm. It's Shark Awareness Day, people. So be aware if there's sharks <laughs> out there for you. <laughs> uh, and yeah. on this day in history, on this day in history, um, anything of interest this day on this day in history? Well, yes, it's Bastille Day. That's oh, the, that's right. That's yes. the thing. In 1789... Uh, Bastille, a prison housing only seven prisoners at the time, was stormed by a crowd calling for the closure of the prison. The storming became the central event of the French Revolution. Revolution. All for seven people. Wow. I didn't know that. It must have been worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And then birthdays, yeah, few people. Terry Thomas. Who's that? I Hey. No way. You remember the guy? Yes. That was Terry Thomas. He was born in 1911. Whoa. Isn't with us no longer. And deaths on the day. We haven't done deaths because there's not usually. Who wants to talk about death? But yeah. Billy the Kid died in 1881 today. Isn't it funny? Because some people think that's a fictional character. Like no, some people think Guy Fawkes was, is fictional. Well, d- d- did you know that, Travis? Uh, who? Guy- Precisely. He, the Guy education Fawkes. system is great. 
Go no. Forbes. Uh, we'll get to that one. Okay. I have to say hello to my niece, Lauren. I love her. So moving on, because we've got to get, <laughs> we got, we got to bounce this thing along. Yeah. I'm pushing it because I want to get to Ross. There's so much to cover. I know. And I'm excited. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to, in fact, actually, uh, this week, um, even her booze, fitness, and, and <laughs> fashion. fashion segment uh, is, is somewhat Bastille Day inspired. Oh, nice. Yes. Very so nice. Take a look. because he always likes to do what day is this and since it's Bastille Day I thought I'd do a low calorie version of the French 75 cocktail and the way I'm going to do this is by switching out the simple syrup which will save you about 50 to 55 calories for liquid stevia now you're only going to use a tiny amount of this because it has a lot of sweetness a lot of flavor and a small amount so go really really easy you can always add more it's harder to take it out and believe me you want to take it out if you go too much so you're going to start with one and three quarter ounces or one and a half ounces of, three quarter ounces or one and a half ounces of gin for those of you who don't like to manage it measure just throw it in and I just have ice in here so I can shake it up and get it cold. And then I've already pre-squeezed my fresh lemon juice. So you get a nice shot of vitamin C, vitamin C, whatever you want to call it. Throw that in there. Tiny, like I say, like a tiny little dump of stevia. We're going to shake this up. I'm using Empress Gin. I just love the color of it. I love the flavor. It's super pretty. And um, the more acidic things you mix with it, it starts to go, can you see it's kind of gone that, it's gone from purple to a pretty pink. If you do more outline, it will start to lose color. Then all you're gonna do is says top up with two to three ounces of bubbles, but you know what, just fill up the glass. That's what I say. Anyway, cheers, thanks for watching and drink responsibly. getting to to our guest today yes. so i mean i'm so excited so i get to do my, my formal intro here um so ross king is an award-winning performer of stage screen and radio he's made he made his theatrical debut at the tender age of five his first radio broadcast at 15 and his television entrance at 17 he's a four times news emmy award winner and a golden mic award winner he's hosted nearly 30 television series for the bbc itv and sky and is the la correspondent for itv breakfast programs lorraine and good morning britain um but before we get to to ross we, i just wanted to take a look at a few of the the highlights of some of his interviews just check this out i'm down to it you know that uh, you could take me in a fight <laughs> 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 Coming up, a lady who needs no introduction. So I'm going to. Oh, okay. Is that all right? Can I? No, I'm sorry. I don't take bribes. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> he came back. I Did you see, see her? Love it. I'm great. The only thing that would have made that better would have been a Baywatch one and then the double stroller. With it, oh, I can't do double strollers yet. That's no? too much. It's too. <laughs> Jen, it's so brilliant to see you again. It's wonderful to see you. And the last time I saw you. You're heading off to Toronto Film Festival. This small movie, Cake. Yeah. What a journey. This little movie, who even expected half of what's come out of it? Yeah. I'm always aware that you've got me thinking, oh God, it's another junket, it's another interview, I've got to be watch what I say, and then this will be picked up that way. And you know, there's such an intense yeah. thing on your private life. Yeah. You know, as I get older, the more I don't give a crap what people <laughs> say or what people think. I really don't. But can you believe it? And you your speech, Eddie, your speech had so many people in tears. Oh, is that true? I don't know. I, I can't remember it at all. I just remember it being a, a, a sort of frenzied blur, but, 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 but thank you. But you know, Here it is. Jerry. Yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations. Nine years ago, when I first chatted to you about Bond, how has Bond grown the character for you? 
Um, oh God, couldn't you start with an easy one? Okay. Uh, no, 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 I'm joking, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite, what's your favorite pizza killer? <laughs> Who knows what's happening with the We can't see anything. One of them might get No, shot. I seriously don't know. Oh. I seriously don't know. I would tell you if I knew, but I don't. That was that. <laughs> that was not. Does it feel almost then slightly like a, an imprisonment in some way? Because you just think, I just want to walk out. Yeah, I used to joke that I couldn't, no one could tell the difference whether, whether the White House was America's greatest public building or the crown jewel of the federal prison system. <laughs> it's interesting as well when you talk about the, the whole Robbie situation. It's a weird sort of rivalry. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you describe it? Um, well, I think we both say it's not a rivalry, but you know it is. <laughs> Was there ever a, a thought for you, the world of politics? They asked me one time to run for governor of California. We need somebody who has a, um, a persona who's known and somebody who can afford to pay for their own campaign. <laughs> and I said, well, why don't you just hire a kamikaze pilot, you know? What works now? I mean, you know, if I wanted to give you a hug or you wanted to give me a hug, you know, do you ask my permission? Can I have a hug? Sure. <laughs> yes. I was going to ask you for oh. Wow. And if that, That's it. I'm leaving. Bye. Uh, yeah, I know, really. I think we should be out of here, really. And if that wasn't enough, he was also uh, honoured in the uh, 2018 New Year's Honours List and, and awarded an MBE for services to yeah. broadcasting, television and, and, the and charity yeah. and the arts. Amazing. I mean, at this point... I feel so inadequate. Yeah, we do. So we, let's just get him on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ross King, MBE. Hey, good morning. morning. Oh. oh, I can hear you. Yeah, we're good. Oh, wow. That, I mean, really, first of all, Ross, what are you doing on this show? I mean, after, <laughs> why are well, you just, here? Can I just tell you one thing? I don't ever want you to think that I've lost it. It's not like I have Leslie Nichol, you know, Mrs. Patmore from Downton Abbey as my, uh, as my <laughs> sister. Um, you know. You know, I mean, you know, that's when you would know that you've really. Oh, oh no! no! Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, my so... God. <laughs> you have, <laughs> Ross, you have no idea how much of a fan of Downton Abbey oh, Sam you is. You have no idea! Oh, no. Can we be friends? I want to be friends! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this has made my life. I'm his only slave, so. Oh! oh. You actually, Ross, can you just like step out for the next 30 minutes and we'll <laughs> yeah, just speak let's to talk down to you? Because know, at this point, <gasps> you've lost Sam for Honestly, the rest of the I could show. cry. I swear, I could cry. This is amazing. Please do another series, another episode. <laughs> please, please. Have you ever worked in a no, big shoot before? Never, never <laughs> 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 oh my. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah. See that? There yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I am shocked and, and thrilled, and it's absolutely fabulous <laughs> and brilliant. Where are you from? Where are you from? I'm, I'm fascinated by your accent. Where? I'm, from, I'm from Sheffield. Yes. As if all our audience didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a Sheffield Yorkshire girl. That's very good. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, you're all flustered now, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, what was that again? I said it won't take your time because it's, it's the Ross King well, show. It's no, no. Well, well, if you come to if, if you come to Vegas, please come and have a cup of tea with us. I've never been to Vegas in my life. Well, oh, no. well, you are you are invited. You are cordially invited. You can, you can stay at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Downstairs, obviously. I have lovely, <laughs> lovely English florally sheets in my guest room. Ooh. It's all very English. <laughs> I want to go and see because I, I want to go and see the Cirque du Soleil thing. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. When, oh, you'd love when it. When they come back. The, the Cirque du Soleil shows are all named after the ticket price. Here you go. Oh. <laughs> 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 It's so true. It's so true. Well, that was amazing. Oh, it's yeah. lovely nice seeing one. you. Mwah. Wow. Oh. And that's all we have time <laughs> for. That's all we have time for on Spill the Tea this <laughs> week. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Isn't that just brilliant? You know, just, there we are. That says it all, doesn't it? She's just it, amazing. It, it, really, it really is. Ross, and... you just made my life, honestly. You oh. just, well, that really was amazing. You do that. Wow. That well, was... Let's... Back on. 
Put your <laughs> well, we need to try to get this back on track now. I mean, <laughs> you know, how to that that completely derailed you. It didn't did. It? I'm all sweaty. I'm all. Whew. You're all the all the, yeah. all the th- you with I was in the dinner. as well. That's what I love. That's the best part, isn't it? Yeah. Joking. I did. Yeah. I thought, oh, you know, it'll be someone else. It, oh, Mrs. Well, Patmore. And the great thing is, we went to split screen, so it kind of it kind of limited your angle. So we're like, what's he talking about? And then we went <laughs> but to the wide. It was like. Oh good lord! So that was that was oh, hilarious. I I want well to done. be you, Ross. I ne- I want to be I you. Want I want your you. life. No, I want your life. No, 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 no. You're second in line because <laughs> you know I was saying earlier on the most interesting man in the world in the beer commercials is not the guy with the beard. It's you. I mean, oh. you really. Let's. I mean, where do we start? I mean, first of all, yeah, MBE. Yeah, I think that's of great interest to lots of people. Are you like Ben Kingsley with the sir thing? Do you like, do you insist on that being attached to every time somebody says your name now? <laughs> um, no, no, I don't. But it is funny <laughs> that I, I did a gig on one of the, the cruise ships just before, obviously, we all went into lockdown. And it was really, it was the first time when I was about to go out and perform on stage you know, and do a bit of the singing and all that stuff that it had been in the introduction, you know, when you heard that that Tim, the drum yeah. roll, and it was really funny. And I, I didn't know they were going to do it. And it was so funny. It was just, I was waiting for, will you welcome, please, you know, finest TV host in his price range. Or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the man with the best reviews and Yelp, will you welcome? And then suddenly <laughs> when they went, blah, 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 MBE, and it's, and it's funny. But it is so, for me, it, it's interesting when I'm watching, you know, you play that clip and Leslie was w- looking at it as well. You, I kind of go, Really? Was that is that me? Yeah. Is that me to the side of Julia Roberts or me beside, you know, Bill Clinton or Clooney yeah. and all the George Clooney and all So you things. have those moments. It's not lost on you. I mean it really is it's every well, time no, this No do you know what I mean? It, it's even like now and that doing that fun thing with Leslie <laughs> um is is such great fun that, you know, and I look out my window and I'm right onto the Hollywood sign. And yeah. at the end of the day, and I don't mean this in any self-deprecating way, but I'm just, I'm a daft boy from Glasgow in Scotland, um, as you can tell by my mug. <laughs> and nice. Oh, very nice, very nice. It's but we're all just, representing one way or another. We all we'll, we'll have our moments. And it's just <laughs> a you... funny thing of, of um, yeah, I, I still, I, I love going on film sets here in LA whenever we go through the gates of any of the studios. I still get that little feeling. That excitement. When I come to Vegas, I love, you know, I, I love going to see the shows and I get that yeah. same excitement the first time that I, you know, got to Vegas and saw the strip and all the rest of it. And also, can I just say that for me, the finest, and enter- people always say to me, you know, like, who's your favorite? Who's this, this? The finest entertainer I have ever seen in my whole life is Clint Holmes in Vegas. Yeah. He is. He is very a talented. For sure. Very yeah. talented. And, uh, he knows his trade. Yes, so, he does. Uh, um. You, but you got started so young. You, so, so it was radio first, yeah? How did you get that gig? You were what, 15? Yeah, uh, yeah I was so, so lucky. That... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, dear. That's brilliant. Um, the, yeah, I was, I was a, a kid. I was that, that annoying little kid that used to get up at weddings and, and sing <sighs> Long Haired Lover from Liverpool and my little board <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. And um, and I always wanted to, I, I I knew then I really wanted to go into show business as such. And then what happened was that I was also playing football and looked at that time I was going to uh, be a footballer. Played for my team then was you know in Scotland and Glasgow we have Rangers, Celtic. Then you have Partick Thistle, this little yeah. team in the middle, or Partick Thistle nil, as Billy Connolly said. That was a full <laughs> title. Rangers three <laughs> nil. <laughs> um, so I was going to, it looked like I was going to play for them until Bertie Old, who was one of the Lisbon Lions, who won the European Cup for Celtic, he was the manager and he said to me, hey, son, he said, you wear out more mirrors than football boots. So that was oh. my time. So, uh, so then I, when I was at school, my math teacher, uh, Roddy Hood, said to me, I hear a good way to get into show business is through hospital radio. And I right. went to hospital radio in Glasgow and uh, we broadcast from these little studios right in the centre of Glasgow to all the hospitals. And then Radio Clyde, which is a big station in Scotland, they were looking for a Saturday boy. And you went in and you did everything. You know, you made the teas, the coffees, the scripts. You just, you did absolutely everything. <laughs> it's like, you've got a walk-on part now, Leslie. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Really 
looking like your partner, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Ever. <laughs> oh, more. And Sean Connery's just joined us. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely oh, really brilliant. Oh, the dog. <laughs> it's great. It's like oh. it's like Victoria Station over there, isn't it? Oh, she's back. I'll be in. I'll be in for you. <laughs> I mean, have my jodhpurs pressed. I may go on a hunt. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Oh, oh, God. oh my That's face is <laughs> my face. Oh. Oh, now, I did yes. look for something, Ross, yeah, and I was digging till about oh, one okay. o'clock this morning, and oh, I was wow. trying to find your song, Rich Girl. Oh, yeah. And I couldn't find it, so can you, you sing it? <laughs> It is actually hidden away on my website. It's hidden. It's like, it, it's not one of those Easter eggs. You know, they always have that thing. It, it's like yeah. great when you find it. It's like, oh, when you find it. It's like a rotten egg rather than an oh. Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's been there a while, forgotten under the uh, under the, the closet there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and and just, yeah, again, looking through your website and all the things that are on there, it's 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 incredible, the the, the stuff you, you have in there. and no, no, um, wait, wait. That you got away yeah. with, yeah. I mean, and and not, you know, even even I love the, the sort of the the section that's the little known fact, including the fact that you played at Wembley. Yeah. You've sung at Wembley. You've yeah. played uh, at Wimbledon with the as was then the world number two, uh, Sue Barker. Um, <laughs> you you know that all these things, and and it's just like really. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, these these and these are things, particularly even when you were younger. I mean, there's a one question that says the most famous person you ever met. That would have been Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. What are the chances of that? And you were you were how old? About four or five, something like that. I was really really young in Nairn in Amazing. Scotland, and uh, I was on the on the beach, and it was twilight. That lovely kind of that dusky sort of setting in Scotland, oh. right by the 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 sea. And then um, Charlie Chaplin loved golf. He loved Scotland. Used to go on his holidays there. And, uh, you know, obviously this old man in the, the big coat and the Homburg. And, I mean, he wasn't the yeah. little tat in the whole <laughs> You shattered my Why image now. <laughs> <laughs> you shattered my image then. That was that was what yeah. I was imagining. So now, I only got the first part of that and I thought, you've done what to yourself? I thought, oh, what? yeah. I, I, I think that word, that word was trending on Twitter yesterday, by the way. <laughs> what was? Oh, I can't say it. It's another word I think's gross. So I can't say it. Oh, okay. um, yeah. We have some nice images of uh, what you've done over the years, and um, you were, you did you did some modeling. Uh, this obviously looks like the eighties. Can you throw that up, Travis? That's no, not no. That's a whole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my that's in, That's what he does at home. Don't show that one <laughs> when the doors are closed. Do you know what? My, my old mate Paul Coyer, TV host, and. Uh, Paul and I are still great friends. Well, wow, that was it was obviously Miami Vice-ish. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you have it down. You have it down. What was that yeah. for? Was that for a clothing company that ad? Do you remember? Yeah, I think it was some. Fa yeah, I don't know how we got roped into it all for some. Some yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great. There was a great, wonderful sort of um, sort of bargainy store, not quite raw stress for less, but a similar type of thing in Scotland years ago called What Every Woman Wants. But obviously that was not what every woman <laughs> <laughs> wants. It. Well, back what in the day, want. <laughs> back in the day, I'm sure it was, you know, the shoulder pads and everything. And the pleats. I mean, you can't beat oh, it, can you? So, so I guess we'll show what you do behind closed doors now. <laughs> oh. Do you know, oh. I think that's an amazing photograph. So I'm all about that. How how did you end up scoring that role? So um, I'd gone after I'd been doing a lot of TV and then quite a lot, to be honest, a lot of the TV that I was being offered was stuff that I didn't really, I, I wasn't really into. It was like, you know, the cooking shows and makeover shows and things that, I mean, I didn't mind hosting, but I, I just, my heart wasn't in it. And that was the mm -hmm. time then they became for a while everything. That was, that was, yeah. it. My, my whole thing was always, I mean, I love entertainment i love news uh, i love show business and so i was like i'm really not sure about all this so then i went off to do um some musicals and i was having a great time doing musicals and then i got this phone call to say look uh jason donovan 
um, the wonderful Aussie pop star. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Guy. Um, Jason uh, is doing the Rocky Horror Show at the moment, playing Frankenfurter. Uh, he's coming out of Rocky Horror Show. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Horror Show. It's coming and, out. Uh, so I said, yeah. So, um, so and, and this is a true story. So Pineapple Dance Studios in Covent Garden in London. Yeah. And they said, uh, so Ross, can you just go along? The producer, director just want to see you, see if you can you know, move to a couple of songs from the show just to get an idea. And so I went along and and I wasn't sure whether it was an addition or what it was. So as I finished one of the songs, finished a little bit of a dance number, I'm not a dancer, but kind of move. And at the end of it, they said, great. So, um, so you know, Monday, the rehearsal start, you've only got six days to get into it because Jason's leaving. I was like, what do you mean? What, oh, I'm doing it? And they were like, of course you're doing it. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> you've got six days to get into it. I was like, oh, and as <gasps> I got to the door, uh, and, and Debbie Ryan, who, who cast it, she'll back up the story, is as I got to the door, I turned around and I said, great, so then I don't need to do this. And what they didn't know was I'd unbuttoned my trousers and I dropped my trousers and I had the, the fishnets. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> and it That's was so funny. They, and all, all I said to them was, all I kept thinking was, if I get knocked over coming into the, <laughs> the studio here and I go to hospital and the nurses put down... <laughs> that's excellent that's one way of getting being memorable for sure but i mean you've yeah. done a lot of theater i mean you did you've you've also actually been a, an olivia award nominee as well mm. um yeah, it, for yeah. it was dick it dick whittington? whittington yeah i know it was the musical for the millennium which was uh directed by the wonderful jillian lynn that people will know of course uh, from the corridor for cats and many other shows uh and so that was that that for me was just i just wanted to work with jillian lynn and, yeah. Uh, to do that at Sadler's Wells in London, and it was 2000. It was the the musical for the Millennium. So to that's amazing. The, the cast was just you know you'd Peter Polycarpo who had been the Phantom. You'd all these you yeah know, big big West West End Wendy's as as we say. Oh, yeah, 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 right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as a, and as a as an actor, I mean you've you've also you've also done film as well. I mean just to look at some of the movies you've been in. The Day After Tomorrow, uh, big it's kind of like life imitating art right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> who, who's your caddy? Half past dead. Trust me. Little Hercules. Star Wars Jedi Fighter Two. Um, Maleficent. I mean, the list goes on. I'd be very lucky. Actually, it was funny. Uh, Jared, the, the wonderful Scottish actor, Jared Butler. He, he he once did a speech about me, and he just said, "I'm looking at Ross's credits on IMDb," and he said, "It all relates to things. It's like if you give Ross money, then the day after tomorrow is when you get it back." <laughs> <laughs> it's really the story of his acting career. He went through every single one and slaughtered me. Fantastic. What a great way of doing that. And you guys, <laughs> yeah. it seems like you guys have a bit of a bromance going yes, on. Yes, it you seems apparent. Butler. Yeah, do you know what? It, I, and sometimes when it does come up in, in interviews and people say like all these famous people, you know, like your, your mates and all that stuff. But like Jerry was my mate long before he was famous. Um, ah. Gary Barlow, I met in way back, like, 89, 90, before the band had had any hits. Right. Uh, Catherine Jones, I met just as she was doing Darling Buds of May. So so most mm. of these people are, are real old pals. They're not yes. showbiz pals. Although, then what's lovely, uh, Leslie, I only met maybe four years ago or so, something like that, when she moved out here. And she's just, as you can see, just the loveliest of ladies. And to do that. Absolutely. And, you know, oh. and she was one. Said, shall I shall I wander in? I was like, let me be brilliant. So, <laughs> honestly, so, um, it's made my day there. Honestly, oh, just brilliant. Great. Now you you are obviously used to doing stuff remotely because you do stuff back home in England. Yeah. But what what's it been like for you with this whole Corona thing? I mean, how are you conducting interviews and how how is it all going? Um, from a, from a work point of view, it's been fine because obviously we can do it like this, and it's yeah. amazing. We're lucky now that we have the technology. If you can imagine, even just a few years ago, we could never have done this. Also, as I said, my house looks onto the Hollywood sign there. So mm. the great thing that um, we can do interviews. We just interviewed Catherine Zeta Jones last week, and we do it on Zoom. But the great thing is that I'm sitting on the balcony, so the camera looks up to the Hollywood sign. Uh, yeah. Some people have watched me on TV in Britain in the morning with Lorraine or Good Morning Britain is that the backdrop is the Hollywood sign, but obviously it's a green screen and they project that image onto it. 
whereas here, it's the real thing. It's the real thing. <laughs> it's the real thing. So, that's um, fantastic. So, yeah, so that, that, that's been great. And I do feel just ridiculously lucky. I mean, I, I always feel lucky in my career, but to actually to be, you know, continue working with so many people are going through so many hardships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, I do, I count, I count my lucky stars every day. But I think there is that thing as well that for everyone and, you know, I think we've all had a couple of little, you know, wobbles. Yeah, um, you definitely. Know, more than others, understandable. And my whole thing has just always been take every single day, you know, one day at a time. And I think it maybe if you can take something good out of this madness is that just appreciate absolutely everything. You know, if you get up, if you wake up in the morning, good start. If you wake up in the morning and feel healthy, even better start. And then just get on with that day. Um, yeah. Right. I think maybe has made us all slow down a little bit because you can't plan. And again, whoever you yeah. believe in, whatever you believe in, but you know, that whole thing of how to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You know, right. Right. As we all know now, you know, I mean, even we're going, you know, am I going back to Britain? Well, normally I would have been back to Britain maybe three times by now. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I'll get back this year or right. will it be next year? You know, we're all, we're all similar like that. But uh, there's so many people that I know are just, and I've got so many mates as well that life's just devastated. It's like, you know, light switch off business. Yeah. So my heart goes out to them because it's just horrendous. Well, have you seen anyone in Hollywood that's, that's kind of, done something unique out of this you know whether it's to connect with their fans or create content i mean i know a lot of people are just you know going on then talking to fans but have you seen anything that's been super creative no i mean i, oh. I think obviously in my old mate gary barlow from take that he started the crooner session that's uh, right yeah i've oh, seen yes. some of those on a lot of people which has been which has been really good um you know in front of les and i were just talking that uh so many charities as we all know, are just devastated at the moment. And yes, so they are. Do a few uh, Zoom uh, type calls, and, it, and it's quite nice that they, you know, they set it up, and it's because you can make it quite intimate, and then you can charge the, you know, the charities can charge, you know, a small amount, and then people can come on and and ask questions and and just feel part of it, and that that's been really nice getting involved in some things like that. And again, you know, when you see what you guys do, it's phenomenal. And I mean, I know you've got Travis there pushing all the. <laughs> buttons and things. but I mean, it, you know i mean even before i came on i was watching and leslie was watching over my shoulder oh. uh, we're just seeing you know you know the the setup you guys have and so yeah we we, we are lucky but it, i think necessity the mother of all invention yes right. that's right so you know and it's funny even for me like this week um i mean i was doing a a, a chat show for a whiskey company for a while uh that mm. we came up with and then I'm actually even doing Zoom coaching this week as well. Oh, oh but, wow. Of course, more people are doing more and more meetings like this. Yeah. Um, especially just doing it Zoom. So, you know, a lot of people just don't know the, the, the things that, you know, like you guys, you know, you're doing this all the time. So you're so yeah. used to think there's things you just do naturally. Um, like I'm just, my hands are all over the place here. I like it. Next <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> line's been We'll it. do it. <laughs> now you're you're so positive. Obviously, I I would think that you grew up in a positive family. What would you say is the best piece of advice that you, you say your mum gave you? Oh wow! I well to to give you a little bit of an idea. So I grew up in in Glasgow, um, in in a council house in Glasgow. Um, very warm place, uh, as people know. You're there five minutes, someone will set fire to you. It's that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you know? Do you know? It's really weird. This is true. And I often say that. Glasgow is just, it's its such a juxtaposition. So you, on the one hand, you've got, you know, it has been the most violent, the murder capital of Europe, but equally, it's been voted the world's friendliest city. So basically, <laughs> so basically, someone will stab you, but then give you directions to the hospital. So <laughs> yeah. It's such a wonderful, uh, wonderful, wonderful place. Um, but so growing up, the great thing is that uh, there's a, a Scottish expression, I kent his feather, which means, you know, well, I knew his dad. So th there's a, a lovely kind of knocking. It's like the tall poppy syndrome that I think only yeah. Britain and Australia have. You know, they build you up, knock you down. Yeah. Uh, right, right. <laughs> give, give you a couple of quick examples. Mum, so 
I remember uh, first one was that I was uh, I was I got invited to go on Celebrity Square, so the American version Hollywood Square. So I'm yeah. a kid and I'm going to go on this show with people like Bob Monkhouse, all these legends that I've just watched, and I feel like I've been plucked, you know, from in front of the TV and put in this show. Mm. So I called my mum uh, to tell her, and she answered the phone, and I mum, and she started crying because she was watching Coronation Street and she hated being disturbed. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> and so I said "Mom." I said, Mom, I'm going to be on Celebrity Squares. And she went, oh, my goodness me, son, that's amazing. She said, I hope you win the car. And I went, Mom, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and then so my, my, favorite, my favorite one that just summed up, Mom. So uh, we're obviously celebrating, I think it's 35 years since Live Aid. And yeah, that's right. That's right. So we had Live Aid, we had Sport Aid, and I'm local radio DJ. I'm hosting an event at the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre. 10,000 people. I'm on stage hosting it all. And I'm just see of people screaming, going mad. And I've got all these pop stars coming on. And amazingly enough, I'm thinking, mom and dad must be proud today. And I look out and I can see my mom and dad. And they've <gasps> pushed their way to the, this is This is without a word of a lie. They've pushed their way to the front. And so I go, ladies and gentlemen, you welcome, please. And I think it was Strawberry Switchblade, or it was like Midjure, you know, one of the founders. Ah. Yeah. And yeah. I go over to the side. I said, I've got to get down to see my mom and dad. And I had a silly spell in Scotland where I had like two minders, which was very silly. And um, <laughs> so, they said, so Campbell said, oh, you can't go. You can't get down. At the, the crowd's going mad. And I went, no, it's my mom and dad. And so I got down. I was probably about 20, 30 feet from them. And I thought, they must be proud today. And I could just see mom and dad's little faces. And I was like, this. And mom went, mom went, speak slower. <laughs> <laughs> talk, talk about keep you humble. That is. And probably good advice. Because, you know, when you get a little kind of into it, you tend to speed up. That's uh, I know that problem myself. <laughs> that, that, so that's funny. So the two bits of advice, dad always said, and because he did a lot of public speaking, he was in the Salvation Army, and he would host mm -hmm. events. So he always said, speak slower and slower still, and you'll still oh. be fine, which was a good point. And that mom, is a good point. Mum always said, just do your best, son. That's all you can do. Oh, I, I see. It was probably 20. I think I was in my 20s because I think everyone, you know, and it would apply to me if I was going to play football. Mum would go, just do your best, son. That's all you can do. And then you think, well, of course I'm going to do my best. But then I realized when I got to maybe 2021, it was what helped you or where you're doing everything so you could do your best. You know, so from a football point of view, had I been training? You know, was I getting enough sleep? Was I eating the right things? Um, you know, again, like if, if I'm performing, have I you know, warmed up my voice? Have I yeah. had some lessons? Right. Have I, you know, really learned my lines or whatever? Um, you know, have I researched my guests? So all the things that you can do to do your best, because then the great thing is when you know yourself, you've done your best, that is all you can do. So even going in for an audition for something, I would never feel bad if you didn't get it because you think, I did my best. I did my best. Right, I, I absolutely. Think, I think that gives you a lot of confidence too and yeah. not to beat yourself up. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I love that they would, you know, told you to speak slower during the whole That is good. Whole That's good. Thing. And you know what? I, I maybe we should take we can take a moment right now and I'm gonna say this slower. <laughs> because we could take a moment right now. Um I, I wanna play the other part of of uh, some of the other interviews that that wow. you've done because again, you know, the the whole clip is just so impressive and I didn't wanna, you know, just just cut it off in its prime, even though it did sort of end at, at Barbara Streisand. You yeah. know? Um, so <laughs> let's, let's just see a couple more uh, of those and, and we'll come back and we'll, we'll top up the tea. Thank you for coming over this. Oh no, you're all right. Oh, no, oh, no. Go ahead, play it. Go ahead, play it. <laughs> I got the watch. Oh. What else you got working oh, there, man? What else can we help you with? I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> When I finally do grow up, though, I won't be like you. Oh, there we are. Yeah, if only. Yeah.
my dear old mum in Glasgow would probably see this movie had a lot of dangly bits in it. A lot of dangly <laughs> bits in it. A lot of dangly bits mm. in it, weren't there? You can't, you can't have a commune without dangly bits. No. That was horrible. Oh, that was really like... That was really shitty. That was. That was. <laughs> you have to redo that. Well, be, be as enthusiastic. As, as in, I'll be as enthusiastic. And ready and take two. Oh. Oh. <laughs> We're at the centre of the universe. Have you been tempted to just reach over and just... A button or two I'm too nervous. <laughs> You're getting like to open up to the entertainment industry, even for an afternoon. I'm sure they're like, just <laughs> shut it all down. Uh, how's the run for president coming along? Uh, I think it's come along good. Yeah. Well, you snicker. I Why don't, are you snickering I'm not like snickering. that? I'm just going. I'll come. I'll become president and come back and fire you. Send me back yeah. to Scotland. <laughs> we were saying earlier before you you came here because we were waiting for you, Princess. Yeah, Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's more to that story, <laughs> but we don't have time. Oh, really? <laughs> I know a lot of people have wanted me to do that for a, a long time. That is, that is just, that's incredible. I think we need to do one of these. It's one of those. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. I think we'll have, an, we'll have to have an altar to, to, to Ross here yes. in the studio. Yes, we should develop a shrine. And we'll, we'll pray to it before every show because we need every bit of help we can possibly we, get. We really do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and actually, this was going to be my question to you. I mean, we are we are literally kind of, you know, not even the great pretenders. We're just pretenders. <laughs> so, you know, if you, you're saying you're doing your Zoom coaching, which is great, but it makes me think, you know, what coaching could you give us? Because our viewers will tell you we need it. <laughs> We can, take, we can take it, Ross. We can take it. Well, do you know, it's funny how you always say, yeah, I can take it. I, my first ever pantomime was in Glasgow at the Glasgow Pavilion. And there was a director, Dougie Squire, so a legendary yeah. Yeah. director, obviously you know him. Um, he had a dance group called The Young Generation. There were yes. Legendary. And so as a kid, to work with Dougie Squires, and I was so desperate. I think I was maybe 17 or 18. And I just wanted to, I wanted to learn my craft. I wanted to do so well. And I remember after the, I think it was the second day of rehearsal and I went up to Dougie and I said, Dougie, you know that I, I, I really do t take direction. Please just give me any advice. Tell me anything at all. Tell me what I can do. And he said, mm. he said, could you be taller and more talented? <laughs> That will apply to me. You know, actually, there's <laughs> a there's short. a there's a good sh uh, friend of ours here in in town, um, Paul Stone, who's a, a show producer here. Yeah. And he uh, he has one of those lines where he went to see an act uh, over here at one of the shows, and he was asked by the act to come and see him to tell him, you know, give see if he could use him in one of his his other shows. And afterwards, he went back. He said, "What did you think?" And and his line was, "Well, it was a, a triumph of enthusiasm over talent." <laughs> I can imagine Paul saying that. I yeah. totally can imagine and, that. And he took it as a compliment. He was like, oh, that really means a lot coming from you. Because <laughs> well, it, it could have been funny, worse. All, it's funny. We've all got our things like, what do you say to people after shows which are not good? And my, my, I have two, which is one is I do, um, I say, I repeat the person's name three times. <laughs> right, right. Oh, Ross, Ross, Ross. What can I say? Can I That's say? one of mine. I and have no my, words. I, I have no words. And then the other one is, hey, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was. We would always only say, you, lovely costumes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'd say, lovely costumes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Music was You'd, great. Bam. I want... <laughs> Lighting was fab. I want to touch a little bit on Last Laugh in Vegas because. Are you all right for a few minutes, by the way? Right. Are, are, are you. Oh, your schedule's all right because we don't want to hold you up. Hold on. Hold on. It's a booking so soon after Christmas. I must say. Hey, I got my first post uh, lockdown uh, confirmation booking yesterday. Did you it's really? It's going to be at the win in like two weeks' time. Really? So I'm breaking the mold, oh. performing back in. Las are you Vegas. roboting? See, that doesn't mean anything to anybody we outside We need to show people what the roboting is. You don't happen to have an image, do you, Travis? No. No, no. Mm. we'll get to that we'll get at a to much that. later date. But, um, so so last, tell, last tell me about the wind. Tell me about what's happening at the wind, because I love the wind. Well, we, we don't really know. I mean, we just got the confirmation of it yesterday. It's going to be a corporate of some description. Mm -hmm. um, but it's an event that's actually going ahead over Good. there. So I have no idea what it's going to look like. But the, well, It's like a first for Vegas right it, now. It really is. <laughs> you you know? know, I'm performing that, more than the people in Cirque. I was lucky to see that that show that they put on 
at, at the win the the one that was a spectacular one with all the dancers and the orchestra. Oh, Showstoppers was it? Showstoppers, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. It was, yeah, that was so a great wonderful show. to see a Vegas stage filled like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, that yeah. was. Really, I mean, that was that was Steve Wynn's kind of um, his baby, wasn't it? It was his baby. So regardless of whether there was a full house or a no house, it was still going to run. run. Yeah, it was going to yeah. run. And it was all his favorite songs from from theatre, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So that's that's because a lot of people thought some of the song choices were weird, but it's like no, not if they were his favorite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it yeah. makes total sense, you know. Um. But Vegas, last laugh in Vegas. I worked with um. ITV on it also, both the theatre side and the, the uh, TV side of it. You were the host on the big night. Uh, I want to throw up the picture of you and I. In fact, the first time you and I hung out, Ross, was yeah. with Andy Wormsley. Don't hold it against yeah. me. And yeah. <laughs> we went to see Matt Goss. And then this oh, was the does after... That, does that look like your shoe? Is someone's leg on my <gasps> no. shoulder? No! Oh, let me tell... <laughs> I am very flexible. I was yeah. going to say, yeah, you can you need, really make ends meet. You? <laughs> you, need, you need to party with me, I'm telling you. <laughs> Let me tell you about the show. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even know it. Let me tell you about the shoe. It's not just any old shoe. After the, the, you know, the performance in the, yeah. uh, in the dressing rooms, and everybody was like crying and emotional, I yeah. said to Bobby, Bobby Ball, Bobby, and I did my little shoulder shrug thing, yeah, and yeah. I went... Can I have your desert boots? Because <laughs> you know, he always wears a brand new pair for each show. Yeah. And he gave them to me and they both signed them. And that was one of the boots that was oh, behind the back of your head. I not my leg. Night, well. Not my leg. <laughs> Wasn't that a great night? I thought you were perfect for opening up to that British audience. Well, thank you. That is so kind of you. But the funniest thing is, so John K. Cooper, the man who, who produced it, and I've known John K. for a long, long time, one of the best light entertainment producers in the world. Yes, absolutely. And he, and he came to me and said, I wonder if you could do me a favor. And I was like, anything, John, whatever, anything. And he said, Vegas, we're doing this show, Last Laugh in Vegas. For those people who didn't see it, we brought out some of the most legendary performers from Britain, from, as you said, Cannon and Ball, Anita Harris, yeah. uh, Jess Conrad. I mean, it was all these the Mick Miller, all those guys. Yeah. Paul, I mean, it was just this wonderful lineup. Brought them out for a kind of reality show. And the end of it was that they were going to perform uh, on stage uh, at New Orleans, uh, the Orleans, sorry. Yes. And it was a wonderful stage there. And Andy Walmsley built this incredible It was set. spectacular, that was set. Beautiful. Wow. But the funny thing was that he said to me, basically, he said, this is what I want you to do. So at the end of it, I said, so basically, John, you want me to be a glorified warm-up man? And he went, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I said, that's fine. That's fine. And he said, all I need you to do is just come out and do, you know, Five, ten minutes at the top, just get everyone relaxed, let them know what the show's about. He said all the performers will feel a little more comfortable because yeah. they know you as well. And it'll yeah. be a nice little conduit with the audience and all the rest of it. So he said, that's it. He said, so just five, ten minutes at the top. And then there's one point, Bobby Crush, wonderful pianist. Yes. Pianist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll he, translate. He, he, um, he, there's one set change and maybe you'll just go out for a couple of minutes. And that's it. So I was like, great. Okay, sounds good to me. And as you know, on the night, like we did the opening, I do that. Great. Okay, on with the show. Show starts and stopped almost right away. I think I went out, we counted it was something like 27 times. Yeah. Yes. It was so funny. Because Bobby Ball kept going, what are you going to do now, son? What are you going to do now? <laughs> you're, like, I've got you're one show. <laughs> I've run out of ideas. <laughs> I know. There was there was a lot of stop starting that night. Oh, remember that. And it was what so and I always remember there was, there was a lovely moment when uh, Jess Conrad who again if people don't, Jess is one of the loveliest men. Jess is now in his 80s. He's always yeah. looked amazing. He still looks absolutely amazing. He had a couple of hits. He was in some great movies uh, back in the UK and he's just a lovely lovely man. Uh, but they had him walk down this huge typical Vegas big staircase. And he was singing Johnny Be Good, which is not, you know, it's like, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I saw him and I thought he's nervous and he's 80 something and he's going, da, da, Johnny Be Good. Da, da, da. And I could hear him, he couldn't catch his breath. And so he got down and I just went, guys, give me water, give me water. And they were like, what? And I went, I I'm going out. And then after he finished the song and he started to talk and I could hear he couldn't right. catch his yeah. breath. So and I just the... walked out and we we'd played football years ago in the show, Busy 11 and all. So I knew Jess well. So I walked out and 
and he could see me and I could see him thinking, thank goodness someone has basically so, stopped the show. So, somebody to, cares. Yeah, right. <laughs> somebody cares. Exactly. So I gave him the water and I, and then I did a couple of gags just to let him, you know, quite yeah. Yeah. good and he was terrific. And then, so that was, a, I walked off, let him do it. His stuff was great. And then, then this is when it all went a bit wrong. So I walked back out after he'd finished and said, what about Jess Conrad? And I shouted into the wings, Jess, I said, because he's been around forever. I said, did you ever meet Elvis? And he said, he shouted back, no. And I went, won't be long now. And that was when it all went wrong. Brilliant. <laughs> oh my God. That was when I lost the audience. <laughs> yeah. The, the atmosphere that night was just... It was great. ...so exciting. It's one of the best things I ever worked on, the whole series. And, um, to, you know, to see them, they, and they were all crying backstage because they just said, we just never thought our age, when we've done amazing things, we've yeah. performed in front of the Queen and, and had these amazing shows, but to actually be in Vegas on this amazing stage oh. and we're all together at our age is just another... And amazing things in their in their lives, and they're all still working. That's what's incredible. The careers are just you know uh, just so long, and people still love them. And oh. uh, it was it was such a great night. Oh, such a great night. You know, my fa our favorite line, Ross, for me and Ian was <laughs> Mick Miller when he's uh, the kids <laughs> presenter, and he says, uh, "I'm going to pour myself some toast." That is our favorite line of yeah. all of them. Oh, it's out of context. Goodness. If you haven't seen it, but it's it's hilarious. Oh, I'll have to my, send my, you a Mick Mick Miller for me, and I, I worked with him not that long ago. And he that, that night, he, I'll tell you one gag that he did that night, which just always makes me laugh. And he says, you know, went went to the restaurant. He said he said that I, I got the octopus. He said it took five hours. And I called the manager over. I said, why does it take what five hours? He said, well, the problem is, he said we cook them live, and they keep reaching out and turning the gas off. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> that is so good. Oh. And then, and then the one he came, the, the, and this was just the other week. He said, "Me, he said, he said, I love going to funerals." He said, "Because you don't have to take a present." <laughs> and, he said, <laughs> and he said, "You know, there's always good food." And he said, "I went to the, this funeral the other week." He said, "No, I went back after." It. He said, "Now up to the widow," and I said, "Excuse me, love." I said, "Have you got the the Wi-Fi pass password?" And she said. How dare you approach me at a time like this, you ignorant little man? And I went, is that all lowercase? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I love him. And I said to him, we were talking about his hair. And I said, you know what that hairstyle's called? And he said, what? I said, it's a skullet. It, your hair is a skullet. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I'm putting that in my act. I'm putting that in my act, you know. That's hilarious. Brilliant, great line. A it? little skullet. That's should... a good one. It That's is. a good one. It is. So, so what does uh, what does Ross do when he's not working? I mean, I mean, you are an expat, and I'm sure there's many things you miss about the UK. But when you are, like, you know, off, what what's, what are your passions? What do you, what do you like to do? I mean, I, I I gather you still, when possible at the moment, still play football. Still a bit of footy now and again. Can. Haven't had a chance to do that for a while. Um, although the rest of my teammates would be very happy with the social distancing, stay away from us as far <laughs> as possible. Um, but uh, is that no, is I'm that like, this, is that the celebrity team, like the one that has the a few different other like Frank LaBeouf's in one of the the teams over there? Is he still playing? Yeah, well, we played we played again when when we had Brit Week here. We played Britain against the rest of the world. And again, right. for me, that was just the most amazing thing because Frank <laughs> LeBeouf, who was playing for the rest of the world, Frank LeBeouf played for Chelsea, was a member of, of France's World Cup winning team. He could have yeah. played us on his own. Um, but I mean, I had this amazing <laughs> team. I was playing sweeper. I had Richard Goff, former captain of Everton, Spurs, Rangers wow. as my centre half. We had Vinnie Jones. We had Barry Venison from Liverpool. We had Warren Barton, who was the most expensive uh, fullback <laughs> from Newcastle. I mean, it was yep. just... You know, those things that are phenomenal. When you get to play like I did at Wembley as well, you know, with these people that you just dreamed of or, you know, you, yeah. you that's know, right. watched them or grew up or watched them as kids. Um, so, so yeah, so I'd still love that. Obviously, not much of that at the moment. Again, right. I'm so lucky that because I love what I do and I love movies and I love TV. So it's mm. great. So, I mean, I'm ca but there's some shows I'm catching up on that uh, Shit's Creek, which everyone, yeah. I'm probably the last person to get into <laughs> But I'm now, and it's brilliant because I'm at episode, or I'm into the second season now, but there's 80 right. episodes, so it's like, yes. You're set for a while now. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm so again, I'm lucky that I, I love what I do, and I yeah. love everything that goes with it. Um, 
and also it's nice. I, I you know I, I I write as well. I've got a couple of novels that I, I wrote with a with a friend of mine, Sherry. We were together with Sherry King, so we've been working on a TV screenplay of that and um, writing others. And actually, funny enough, writing a, a, a little short movie at the moment that is based in Vegas. And, oh, uh, which which I I just can't wait to hopefully get it done. Oh, um, that's exciting! You know, wow. it's, a, it's a little bit of a tribute to Clint Holmes. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've got hopefully great people. I've got uh, yeah. I won't tell you too much. No, about. well, but if if you're going to be out here, I mean, I'm not sure whether you're going to be doing like the whole Southern California looks like everywhere on the planet type thing, or no, whether no, you're no. actually going to be filming Obey. here. Oh, Obey. I'm excited. Well, that, then you'll have to because we tried to get you in the studio like last yeah. year when you were here in Vegas, and schedules didn't work out. But next time, and then if you need some filming, we got the whole studio right here. So if you need oh. some... Uh, yeah, it's more than this. It's more than oh, just yeah, this. Oh, yeah, it's a lot more than this. Five and a half thousand square feet of, of creative oh, wonder. And wonderment. I'll make you some sausage rolls to lure you in. Oh. <laughs> I will, I promise Boom. you. Boom. That's, you that's just lured me right in. <laughs> oh, sausage. I always remember as a kid, and we, there's a thing that we have in Scotland, which is very weird, called show of presents. It's the yeah. weirdest thing that anyone's ever heard of. And so before a wedding, they would have a show of presents where you would, the, the bride's, you know, or the, the mother-in-law-to-be's house, people would put all the presents there and then huh. the bride or the the, the mat uh, matron of honor, whatever, or one of the bridesmaids would take people around and go, and this is from Uncle Jimmy and this is it. And it was, and I would remember it, my cousins and I was handing out the sausage rolls and I yeah. handed them to the minister who was going to officiate at the wedding. And then I started laughing and i had tea coming out my nose my mum thought it was disgusting and she said what what is it and i said i just gave a, a sausage roll to the minister but he said he couldn't eat them because they made him fart and he, <laughs> said, he said he said i can't eat them because they make me fat <laughs> <laughs> the accent <laughs> and i just remember that it's, it's funny it's just stayed with you for, for years and years and years. Well, I trust hilarious. you, my sausage rolls won't make that happen. Yeah, well, actually, <laughs> I, I thought, won't do that to you. I thought about you the other day, actually, because I was at the British India market, I think, and, and we found, actually, like, we got these Guinness flavored crisps, crisps which are, yeah. are kind of weird. But then I picked yeah. up another thing, and I, I wanted to get your opinion as to whether this is a, <laughs> an abomination. Um, right. Travis, we can get it on this one here. It's. Um, oh, oh. It's, it's haggis oh. in a can. Oh, they say I do love haggis. But isn't that just weird? It is very weird. I'd love to try it, though. I know. I, you know what? We have uh, Patrick uh, Littlejohn here, who is his, uh, a man of my business partner's husband. He's, he's the foodie, and yes. he's, uh, he's from Goldsby up in, uh, up in, in Scotland there. Yeah. The little, and, and I'm going to have him open this because I, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm not sure even to ex what I'm going to expect. Is it going to well, be the whole thing? It's going to be a random or? shape, isn't it? It is going to be what, weird. What, what, is it, is it a, like a traditional? It, I don't know. It's a haggis in a can. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, we'll see. There is a terrible thing when you ask Scots people what, what a haggis is, and it's really, it's like everything with the sheep. Just take the wool off and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. And it's so delicious. <laughs> it's so yummy. But we'll uh, we'll get it made and report back. What it is. Yeah, no, it's 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 a it's a little bit little bit weird. And um, <laughs> but we'll we'll have Patrick cook it and we'll we'll report back. Well, that, last week, Ross, we we actually made marmite pop last week and drank it. Was it last week or the week before? Yeah. Well, there was a the, we, <laughs> was we found this image. We don't know if it was real or not. We don't. And it was marmite. It was marmite so, oh. uh, soda. Yeah. And we couldn't find any, so we just made some on the show, and uh, it was as good as it sounded. It, it was dreadful. It was absolutely dreadful. But we'll try anything on this show, pretty much, won't we? We we asked people about the marmite question. Half liked it. Half didn't like the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> so I mean, and this, you know, I think I think we probably should let you go because I mean, otherwise this show could go on for like you know probably three oh. more days. But oh, um, well, no, it's great. I mean, thank you so much for for joining us. Yeah, here. You know, I mean, this has had, been a brilliant show. It's, I re it's, it's been just fantastic. been. I can't wait to watch it back from the beginning. That it, I to watch. I need to watch my reaction. That's what I you, think you, I need to yeah. do. Leslie Nichol, Missy oh. Patmore. That's Honestly. incredible. That is probably going to be one of my my favorite 
that would be one of my favorite moments probably of the year, not even just the day, oh. the week, the month, or even oh. the year. Oh, I, do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I can turn on any Downton, Downton episode. It doesn't matter what order it's in, and I'll watch it. And I right. love every aspect of it. Oh, I did it all in order. Uh, I've done it all in order three times from the oh. beginning to the end. And then if it's just on PBS, I'll just I'll just watch it. It doesn't matter what episode it's on. Hmm. I, I love the acting, love the characters, the stories, the costumes. Oh, my gosh. I, need, I want to go back to that time and right. wear those kind of costumes. But absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. We'll have a Downton show. Yeah, we can all we, dress we, up. We, we, oh, I, you see, that's yeah. I'm all, I'm all about that. All right, totally. <laughs> that'll work. We'll, we'll do that one time. And then when you're in Vegas next, because I know you dip in and out. I mean, it's yeah. weird right now, of course, but I mean, you know. Yeah, we want you to come in the studio. We well, do. Love to, thank you. Yeah, yeah we'll no, put no, a no, we'll no, put no, a spread no. on. We'll put a little spread oh, on. Oh, your sausage rolls, they'll make me fat. Oh, yeah. Sausage fat. rolls. <laughs> fat, fat, fat. <laughs> v- Volivants, a bit of we'll, trifle. Well, I tell you who we'll get in because I know. I also know that you're a big James Bond fan. Yes. Um, but hence, the, is that Roger Moore behind you on the wall there? It is. Uh, that's, a great it is. that's a great picture. I've been admiring that actually. Yeah. That's that's a that's a piece. Well, one of our viewers um, from who lives in uh, he's he actually lives in Santa Monica, but uh, his name's Kevin Kevin Flick. He's always on our show. His dad is Vic Flick. Now Vic oh. Flick, yes, oh. well done. See, yeah. I, I led you up there, and Thank so you. and and Vic Vic lives yeah. here in Las Vegas, and. Really? Uh, well, yeah. he was he was here in Las Vegas. He went to um, uh, to to your neck of the woods over there, and then he moved back here about uh, a year ago or so. And um, you know, at some point, and obviously we have to probably get beyond where we're at right now, but we want to get him in as well. So it would be so oh. cool. We'll, we'll if yes. we can make it happen, so we get you and Vic Flick, and he can be playing the thing. That and, would be. But that's gonna be down to Kevin if wow. he's still watching. That would be really special. O. 007 heaven on that one. That yeah. Oh, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Whenever I look at Roger, though, I always, I always think of Roger going, if you take Viagra, it won't make you James Bond, but it will make you Roger Moore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Love it. Absolutely fantastic. Love it. And on that, on that note. <laughs> on, that, on that high point. <laughs> on that high point. You know, Ross, thank you so much. Oh, it's just, honestly, it's been, been a treat, a real treat. Oh, I see you again as well after all. God, wait, wait, yes. What did we do? Was that two years ago now? It was 2017, at the end of 2017. Can you believe that? It's yeah, gone it's so been, fast. It's at the moment on ITV. It has. I, <laughs> I think they need to do another another series. Same format. So when, when, when are we going to be, be seeing you next, though? You see, obviously, you're still doing the, 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 you're the, the king of L.A., so you are doing the reporting for the, the British shows, yeah. right? Yeah, back on Lorraine tomorrow morning. So Nice. Um, and that's a great thing that I get to sit here in front of my, my computer uh, rather than having to go to the studios. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we do that. And then we're going to do a chat with, uh, with Leslie Nickel. We're social distancing, obviously. Um, yep. So we we'll do a little bit with Leslie this week as well. Like you did yeah. earlier, obviously. Yeah, total social distancing. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to help it. I'd have to hug her if I was there. Busted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so huggable, isn't she? Yes, well, exactly. yes. Exactly. And are you going to be doing any more of your podcasts, though? Because I enjoyed uh, yes. them. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it sounds crazy, but when you get involved in so many other things as we are, you tend to forget about it. And mm. uh, I do need to get back onto it. In fact, Jess, my lovely executive assistant, has just... Join so there we are, Jess. Podcast, put that on the list for today. Yes, <laughs> we're waiting for more, yeah. and then we'll share them love, on our do love, page. Do you love the LA way that I go? My executive assistant is it? Yeah, uh, it's one? yeah, yeah. Smoking but at least mirrors. You, it was you still kept the accent though, so you got away with it. And I love it, you know. There we are. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Gone. A little bit, uh, a little bit there, you know. We oh. <laughs> Can you come back every week, please? Yes, please. Uh, Will you be our entertainment reporter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we've got you in our budget. We can afford you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure of it. All the budget. <laughs> Find his TV host in his price range. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Can I pay you in sausage rolls? <laughs> Whoa. Bye, Mrs. That's back to where we started. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's exactly where we started. I'll provide Plenty the sausage. sausage. She can provide the roll. <laughs> oh, yeah, <gosh>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ross, thank you so much, my friend. Thank and you. Uh, we'll see you again soon. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Mwah. Thank you. All right, Love take, care. See you. take care. Bye, see you take care. Oh, my gosh. Wow. This day just n- does not need to end. 
It's been a like the show. It's right? been a very <laughs> special show. That was that was definitely worth. Uh, I have to go back and watch my face. I have to do that yeah. because I, I felt myself get warm from my feet all the way up to my head. I I, I was this thinking is this is not happening. Yeah, I, as soon as I, I saw her, I thought, oh my gosh, this is <laughs> this is you. This is this is your show right here. <laughs> this is my show. Yeah. Oh, next thing I'll be asking to be in down to nabbing. <laughs> That'll be my next thing. Like, can I be an extra? You can, well, yes. Oh. If I ever make any more. So. Oh, my friend Cops is here. Cops. So she says uh, she loves Ross's house too. He's done so many things and so many shows. It's. It's, I do, I feel completely like I've even lived my life yet when you look at what he's done. Well, you know? I know, it really is. <laughs> and, and, and guys, thank you for staying with us through that. I mean, I know that was, oh. it was I hope you had as much fun as we did because oh. that was just, just too much fun. So getting back to the comments here, Kevin. See, I was talking yes. about you there. Yes. And uh, you got to play uh, play agent there to get your, get your dad in. Hasn't it been fun, Mick? Or maybe we can, maybe, see if he can figure out Zoom, we'll just do it from his home. He can, he can buzz in like that. I be, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, and who else we got? Um, yeah, yeah, cops. I love Ross's house. is pretty nice, isn't it? I like that. I was looking. I was looking beyond him. I was like, oh, I like. I like the stairs with the little lights in. And yeah, the, oh yeah. Ah, I, yeah. Oh no, I very, want that. I want that Roger Moore picture. That pad was, pad was very LA. It, well, it was, was nice. Very, yeah, it was lovely. Yeah, it was yeah. Very yeah I nice. could, I could do that. I like the fact that he spotted Bobby's desert boot behind his. That own. was, that was <laughs> very, thinking uh, it was my leg. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm super flexible. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, yeah, as usual, we can't really beat that. We I think, can't. We can't. We I really think we can. can um, we can quite safely say uh, that was a that was a great show. And I hope everybody found it interesting. If they don't know him beyond, you know, well, his entertainment reporting. And that's the thing. I didn't, to the extent, not to the degree that 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 you know I know now, or, or you know, in, in prepping for the show, that um, that it's it's incredible. What yeah. he's done. I mean, yeah. we didn't even touch on some of the things yeah. that he's he's done, whether yeah. it be just in life or in his career. And he's written books. Yeah, um, written the books. Uh, he played football outside a hotel with Bob Marley at one point. That's right. Oh, that's right. There's all these little things that I'm like, oh, I'm asking about that. I and he, do always, he always played football twice a week, regardless of what was going on, apart from Corona. Yeah. Um, but football's a massive part of his his life. Yeah, I, and I totally get it. I haven't played myself in a long while, so you know, <laughs> we'll get him in the studio. We'll have a kick about. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how that goes That'd be down. Good. That'd be good. <laughs> so I do hope everybody really enjoyed it. Learned something new about, about Ross King. Um, I know some people were surprised to see Ross King, you know, watching from England. Like, oh my gosh, it's Ross. You know, uh, fun guy. His interviews are great. They are fun. They're relaxed. And I think that's why he gets a lot out of people because I think they enjoy it. Like, oh, oh it's going to so. be Ross King. It'll be fun with him. So He just puts everybody at ease. Yes, yes. I mean, you look at, you look at those clips there. Yeah, I, I mean, feel like it was his show, actually. Yeah. I felt more at ease because he was on the show. <laughs> oh well, he's a pro, isn't he? He's I mean, a total he even, pro. you could see because there was a little audio glitch. I think you guys got a little bit of it sometimes, but it wasn't full uh, duplex. Duplex, I think. Is that what they call it? I think where you can talk at the same time, and so he, you could, I uh, could yeah. see him. He was like pausing. He, he knew exactly. Yes, total yes, pro. Yes, I can't wait till he comes into town because he does dip yeah. in and out, and if he's going to be filming here. Well, it's yes. be great. I'm excited about that. I know, me too. We didn't touch on. He's a big. He's a big memorabilia collector oh, as well. Right. I wanted to see some of his memorabilia. Yeah, we'll have to just catch him on that one on the next time because we will. he's just. <laughs> we've got we've got a lot of material. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that's that's yeah. probably you know about it for the Ross King fan club for today. It is, and I'm the number one fan. And oh yeah, yeah. great. Uh, just a great a great show. Glad you all watched in. Uh, to see how much fun Ross is. And uh, obviously, we'll keep up with updates of Ross as well. So. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. thanks to Ross. Thanks to Eve for her BFF. Thanks to Travis for whatever oh, he Always does. being here for us. Indeed. And um, we're going to go and glow a little we now. We are, just actually. Look at After me. that fun thing. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.